Hello, this is Alex from PHP Academy with another video for the new Boston. Now, we've already looked at databases and why we should use a database, but now we need to find an easy way to manage our database before we start to connect to our database and start to sort of add and retrieve data. Now, what you can see at the moment is something called PHP My Admin, and it's a freely available piece of um, software, if you like. Um, it does come with an XAMPP uh, install, so if you so if we go over to localhost, uh, you can see we're presented with the XAMPP um, sort of control panel, if you like. So down here we've got tools, and you can see PHP My Admin. So if you just click on that, if you don't have XAMPP, if you're running something else, then um, you can uh, download it, so just Google for PHP My Admin, copy it over, and you just put your uh, database settings in there. So your server, which will be localhost, um, and then everything will be managed for you. So the first thing we need to think about is um, the server we're connecting to. So the server name that we're connecting to, let's just write it in here, we'll get rid of the PHP tags. The server at the moment is localhost. And this is the case for most um, for most. Um, MySQL um, host names. For example, if I had paid hosting and I was uploading to um, a shared hosting account, for example, um, usually I could specify localhost and uh, it would connect straight to that. However, if I was connecting to another database on another server, I'd obviously have to specify the server name itself. Okay, so now. Uh, Let's look at this tab here called Privileges, and we'll be given a list here of um, of users. So at the moment, you can see we've got root twice with uh, a host 127.0.0.1 and localhost, and password no. Now, because I'm running on my computer and I'm not currently connected to the internet, then there's no need for me to set a password. Uh, obviously, it would be better if I did set a password. However, for now, I've not set a password. So, in the examples that you see me using, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be using a password. My password is just going to be specified as blank. So, we've now established that the username here is root, which can be seen here. And you can also add a new user. So, if you wanted to add something uh, that was a bit more friendly, so you could say Alex, for example. Um, and then you can specify the host, but uh, that's best to use localhost, and then you can specify a password. Okay, you can even generate a secure password. So we've done that, and now obviously I've already spoken about the password, uh, password, which is blank. So I'm just going to put null here. So we've established the server, the username, and the password, and this is all we need to use to connect to our database. Now, um, we're not going to be looking at that now, but that's just how you're going to find that information out. Um, now, let's look at, um, let's go back to the home page here. Now, let's look at these uh, on the side here. Now, what you can see here are databases that I've created sort of over the years or months, if you like, of uh, just things that I've worked on in general. So, you can see that we've got a, um, a database name. So, we've got cart, for example, here. We've got uh, quotes, for example, here, videos, for example, here. These are databases. These are our database names. And to create a new database, we use this uh, field here. So I can create a new database called, um, let's just say, a, a database. So I've chosen to create um, a new database called a database. We put an underscore in there. And I'm going to click Create. Now you'll see it appear. Um, here we've opened the database now if we go back to our home page you can see that it exists up here and you'll notice something different about this and all the other all the other uh, databases listed that it doesn't have a bracket with a number in now this bracket with a number in is how many tables exist on your database so if we for example click on um, videos okay you can see that we've got one table inside here therefore we've got a one in brackets um, the same with all the others. So if we click on a database at the moment we've got absolutely no tables inside of it. We're getting a message here saying no tables found in database. 
Now, it's fair enough having a database on its own, but we need to have tables to store data. We can't directly store data inside of a database. It has to contain tables. And in the last example I showed you, we had a users table and then we had an uploads table. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a table called users. Now, number of field is the number of columns that we have um, listed. So let's go back here. Remember before we had username, password, um, first name, etc. So what we need to do is we need to, before we create a table, think about how many uh, columns or fields, if you like, that we might need. So for example, if I was creating a user login database, the minimum we need really is an ID because we need to assign a unique ID to each user, a username field, um, a password field. That's all we really need to create a user login system. So I'm going to come back to my database and I'm going to choose number of field three. Now I can click go and what this is going to do is it's going to transfer me to this area here where I can create a data, uh, create each field. Now it looks like a lot of information but you don't have to specify all these boxes, you don't have to choose a drop down for all these boxes but there are some important parts that you will need to uh, specify. So for the field, this is the field name. So the first one I'm going to choose is ID, the next one I'm going to choose is username and the last one is password. So now I've specified my field names. Now what I need to do is specify the type of data that I want to store.